about times. This is not a soccer match. There are not individual goals individually attained. They have to be collectively summoned, collectively energized, and there has to be a common theme to all of those. And I think, and I think this panel will bring that home to you, that particular theme is public health. And if we are able to assure that, and if we are able to guarantee the assurances which make that possible, then each of those goals, both independently and collectively, will be realizable. I think that, that is really the, the message which I hope all of us here on this side of the podium will bring to you. And I think more important, the message that we would like to hear from you in terms of your own thoughts on it. I'm, I'm not going to introduce each of the panelists elaborately because I think all of you have their biographical sketches with you. They're all very well known in their own right. But I would like to ask each of them in turn to reflect upon the theme of this free conference and also relate that, I think, to the vast area of their personal experience. Because the one thing that Joanne and, and uh, David have done a tremendous job in, in arranging this conference is to bring people together who really can tell you what they have sensed at first hand. This is not something which they have read about. It's not even something they've studied. It's something they have lived through, they have worked for, and they have the ability to share and communicate. I'll begin with uh, Dr. Selim Palunjai, who is the Deputy Director of Policy at the Millennium Campaign. I was very struck because when I, when I read up about Dr. Njai and his work in, in the Gambia, where he's from, I realized that he worked for a long time on something called PRSP. Now, PRSP is one of those, uh, those acronyms which has enormous number of interpretations. I think everyone is, is agreed on the PRS, which is Poverty Reduction Strategy, but whether the last P stands for papers or programs or projects, no one seems to be quite clear. So he started actually a program in, in, uh, in Banjul called Demystifying PSRP or PRSP. And I think that, that worked very well. And I was also very struck by what you said about the fact that we have two very ready sources, if you will, of assurances for public health. One is knowledge and the other is resources. The only thing is how to match them together. So maybe you could share some ideas on that side. Um, thank you very much for that um, introduction. Um, as um, tells you, my name is Faro. I work with the United Nations Millennium Campaign as the Deputy Director in, in China Policy. Um, today I want to talk to you mainly about um, MDGs, which as we know this year is a very, very important one for the United Nations. And I think this pre-conference as well as um, the one planned for uh, Australia in, 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 at the end of August are important milestones in this lead up to the conference. We know the Millennium Development was actually emanated from the Millennium Declaration, which was signed in uh, 2000 by 189 leaders. And this declaration actually represents, represented a promise to the world's poor to end poverty, disease, and hunger from the world by 2015. And of course, the MDGs are uh, the global framework that was developed to ensure that we all move together in one direction with measurable targets and a time frame for action. It was at the time when the declaration was signed that the then Secretary General Kofi Annan established the Millennium Campaign. And our main mandate was to really work with the world's citizens to hold the governments accountable for that promise um, that was made. I want to emphasize something that the majority said in terms of the interlinkages between the Millennium Development Goals. I know here our main concern is the Health Millennium Development Goals, which are mainly MDGs 4, 5, and 6, but they are all very linked and very much interrelated. Health, of course, is quite critical for any human being. We all are here because we are in good health, but there is something responsible for that good health. You need good food, you need nutrition, you need clean water to be healthy. And then, of course, you need education and the other things. So that interlinkage of the MDGs is quite critical, which is why for us, and again, going back to what he said about PRSPs, poverty reduction strategies are actually meant to be sort of like a general framework within which a government aims to achieve socio-economic development for its citizens. 
it does have quite a number of um, different aspects. Looking at the social services, health education, looking at also the productive um, aspects of the economy, as, as well as I mean, other monetary and fiscal issues that are necessary for a country to, to prosper. Um, I don't think this is a session on PRSPs, and I don't want to go I mean, much more into, into PRSPs, but if anybody is interested, we can talk about this later. Now, this year being the 10th uh, year of the MDB journey, and uh, leaving us just one part of the way, the United Nations will be conducting uh, or will be uh, convening a summit in uh, September where hopefully world leaders will actually review what progress we have made in the past, what concerns we have encountered, what are the factors associated with successes and uh, failures, and hopefully come up with a concrete set of actions to ensure that we achieve the MDGs by 2015. We have learned quite a lot of lessons, I mean, um, as we see from the Secretary General's um, review, keeping the promise that was released uh, some time ago. And we know one of the key issues in this is that governments around the world, particularly developing country governments, need to take leadership in the national development process. Development cannot be achieved based on uh, what we call support or outside intervention. A government has to take the responsibility in um, developing the necessary policies and programs and then supported by and probably uh, external investments. However, we know there are constraints that we have encountered in the past 10 years, some of which were actually daunting challenges, especially the effects of the economic and financial crisis, which affected developing countries quite a lot, but as we all know, they had very little hand in, um, in, in causing the crisis. We know before that there was also the food and fuel crisis, and all these things have had a negative effect on the MDGs. In some cases, we have seen progress being stalled. In some cases, we actually have seen progress being reversed, as we see the number of people that are poor today, or the number of people that are hungry, are much more than what they would have. What would have been the case if um, the crisis had not occurred? However, the crisis, we firmly believe, is not an excuse. We should really strive to attain the MDGs by 2015. So therefore for September, and I'm linking this to this conference and also what we will be hoping to do in um, Australia in, in, uh, in August, we need to ensure that come September, we come out with some concrete actions in terms of what we need to do to achieve the MDGs, particularly the health MDGs. We know that child and infant mortality um, MDG 4, maternal health MDG 5, and also diseases HIV, AIDS, malaria, TB, MDG 6, are the ones that are most lagging behind. And one of the reasons that we know they are most lagging <coughs> behind is one, there has not been the sufficient amount of investment made in, 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 in those um, areas. But also, I mean, the lack of integration of these together with um, other, um, or, other policies. If I go back to my former job before, when I used to be head of planning back home in my country, the health ministry said reproductive health was their priority. I said, okay, fine, I think reproductive health should be a priority and um, it actually needs an integrated approach to address it. But when it came to resource allocation, they had 0.17% of the health budget allocated to reproductive health. And I said, are you serious? I mean, if reproductive health is a priority, you really need to make the required level of investment in order to address it. That was one. The second issue was there was the need to actually link it to other issues and other development programs. Because in order to address reproductive health, you need to address a number of other things, both in the health sector, in the industry sector, in the education sector, and also in, in other sectors. Therefore, for September, what we all need to do <coughs> is to ensure that we come up with a concrete set of actions that would enable us to achieve the MDGs. 
and these include the need to mobilize adequate and consistent financial resources that will help.